Hello, today we're going to talk about light, um, specifically how uh, light interacts with objects whenever it's shown upon them, but we're also going to look a little bit at the basics of light, uh, kind of how do we know what it looks like, answer those uh, types of questions. So one of the questions that people have been trying to answer forever is what is light? Okay, it's one of those things you can't actually see. Uh, which makes no sense, right? It's like, oh, we well, can see light all the time, but you can't see, see it. You can't really look at it and go, oh, <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly what light looks like. Let me zoom in on that. You know, it doesn't really work that way. <clears throat> so I put this video on here. Obviously, I can't play it in this, but you need to watch it. Okay, I'll have this uh, PowerPoint available to you. Um, and I would highly suggest going back through the PowerPoint itself and watching the embedded videos. They're really good. Um, and you may have some time to kill, so... That'd be a great idea, and it'll also help you on your quiz whenever you get to it. So, we don't know what light looks like, but we do know what it does, okay? And by knowing what it does in certain scenarios, we can model what we think it looks like, okay? So, we cannot see light up close. You can't zoom in on light, okay? It doesn't really work that way to look at what it... We can't zoom in enough to see what it actually looks like. But we can tell what happens when light shines on things, okay? So, up here, uh, you have two pairs of polarized sunglasses, Okay, whenever you have, um, whenever light travels through one pair, it may just, you know, block out a lot of the rays and, and so they work as sunglasses. But if you take another pair and you tilt it, you rotate it 90 degrees, it'll actually block out all of the light. Um, so light polarization kind of proves that light is behaving as a wave because light, um, if it's behaving as a wave, can be polarized. Okay, and this is kind of the view of light that we have, what it actually looks like. So you put one polarizing slit goes there, so it lets this vertically polarized light through. And then you slip on another, a horizontal polarizer, and no light gets through. And that's what you're seeing with these glasses. You can go to your uh, local, um, you know, academy and grab two pairs of polarized sunglasses and do the same thing. We also know that light interferes with itself. Okay, here is a laser being shown into a diffraction grating, which is really just a slit, a lot of little slits right next to each other. And the light is actually interfering with itself and forming interference patterns. Okay, well, waves, only only waves can form interference patterns like this. And so this led people to believe that light itself is a wave, and that is true. There's a little more to the story, which we'll get to later when we do modern physics. But light does behave as a wave, and you can uh, model it in that sense for a lot of different things. Okay, so this is our best model of light right here. You can see is an electric field that then generates a magnetic field, which generates an electric field, which generates a magnetic field. And if you picture how it looks, you've got this oscillating, these two different waves oscillating at 90 degree angles. And the only speed that they can travel to stay in that uh, particular arrangement is the speed of light. So we know that electromagnetic waves, which is what we consider light. Now remember, light, as you think of it, is what you can see. Okay, that's, you know, you look at the sun, hopefully you don't stare right at it, but that is light you can see. That actually represents a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, a lot of things are electromagnetic waves. Light is just one of those things, but all electromagnetic waves carry energy, and they move at the same speed. So whether you're talking about radio waves or gamma rays, they all move at the same speed. Okay, light would fall in between there. We'll look at that in a second. They also, and this is important to think about, they don't require a medium for transit transmission. So like sound, you can only hear sound because there is air between you and the things that are making sound, generally speaking, right? So if, you're, uh, if you clap, you hear that clap because the sound travels through the air. The air is a medium. Light doesn't need a medium. It can travel through the vacuum of space, whereas sound cannot. Uh, which is good. That way the sunlight actually reaches us and, and the infrared rays and all that. Um, so light does not require medium for transmission. Um, and they're all created by the vibration of electric charge. Okay, If you vibrate an electric charge, you create an electromagnetic wave. And this is how radio signals are produced. Um, but this is how any, any electromagnetic radiation is really all just starts from the vibration of an electric charge, which we talked about before. Uh, any kind of vibration or of any kind will, will generate a wave. Light is no different. You just got to vibrate the right things. 
All right, so the electromagnetic spectrum is all of is anywhere. Anything that is an electromagnetic wave will fall in this spectrum. There are some things that you probably notice. You have radio waves. Um, they are, you know, pretty big. You know, ten to the third. So that's a thousand meters. They can get up to a thousand meters, um, and you know, kilometers even. Um, you have a microwave, which are pretty small, centimeters. Okay, a little bit smaller. Then you have infrared, which get even smaller. These are the, this is heat. When you feel heat on your skin, say you're standing next to a fire, that's typically infrared. Okay, then you have the visible spectrum. This is a very, this is what we can see. Okay, all the colors, all that, uh, you know, really, really small. Then you have ultraviolet getting even smaller. These are what's going to give you sunburn. Then you have x-ray. Break your arm, got to get an x-ray. You wear that lead blanket because lead tends to block x-rays, whereas skin does not. So the electromagnetic radiation uh, from an x-ray or x-ray electromagnetic radiation can penetrate skin because it is the size of individual atoms, which is smaller than your skin cell. So it can penetrate the skin and show with the bone uh, on the other side, and then you can display that picture. And then you have the gamma rays. Okay, these in this range are considered dangerous, right? You don't really want to be in contact with gamma rays. They're really, really small. They penetrate everything, uh, and they can cause a lot of damage to the individual, you know, the DNA structure of your cells, which is bad. So um, you don't want to be around gamma rays. But what I wanted to show you on this is that everything does fall on this same spectrum. Electromagnetic radiation is all made the same way. The only difference is the wavelength. So as you get to these higher energies, okay, and now you need this for the quiz, as you move to the right on this spectrum, meaning going from radio to gamma, the energy gets higher. You can tell the wavelength shrinks. And if the wavelength shrinks, the frequency gets higher. Okay, so if if you have, uh, say you have to keep a constant speed, so if frequency goes up, wavelength has to go down. So if frequency gets higher, wavelength gets lower as you move to the right, and the energy gets much higher because the energy is only based on the frequency. So frequency gets higher as you go to the right, energy gets higher as you go to the right, wavelength gets shorter, and you can see that looking at this picture. All right, here's another video. You can watch it. It's pretty good. All right, so we can only actually see things that are between 400 and 700 nanometers, or I say things, electromagnetic radiation that is between 400 and 700 nanometers. You look over here, this is UV. We can't see UV light. Okay, We can't see the stuff that gives us sunburn. It's right out of our visible spectrum. Get into the 350 nanometers to about 425. This is what we would, this is violet. Go from 400 to 5, 450 to 500 gives you blues. And then you get to 550 in the greens. And then you get the yellows and the reds. Uh, all the way up to 700. So we can really only see between 400 and 700 nanometers, basically. Um, and then as you get higher than 700 nanometers, we can't see that either. Um, and that would be the infrared radiation. So what happens when light strikes the surface? You can tell a lot from this picture. Okay, You see these people walking. We can see light. In order to see something, light has to hit it, reflect off of it, and come back to your eyes. We also know light can go through stuff. Uh, and then, of course, it can get reflected. You can actually see the sky on these windows because a lot of the light is being reflected. So light, when it strikes a surface, can do one of three things. It can be reflected, transmitted, or absorbed. Okay, so, um, you know, and, or all three of these things can happen, as does with windows. They can happen at the same time. It really depends on what, it's, what, what the light's being shined upon. Okay, so... Uh, when you look at these, you know, reflected means that it bounces off. Absorbed means that the object takes the light in and doesn't let it leave. And then transmitted means it goes right through. So typically clearer objects um, will be will transmit light. So reflected, bounced off, and the wave energy is not allowed to pass through if it is absorbed. Transmitted means it goes right through. All right, so what you see actually depends on the electromagnetic radiation that falls on it. So like... Uh, you look at with thermal radiation scanners. If you just shine thermal radiation, this is what you holding an iPhone 1 would look like. Uh, and then here's the visible spectrum, what you're used to. Ultraviolet, X-ray, notice that you can see through the hand there. So everything you see depends on what falls on it. Okay. So here's an interesting thing. The speed of the, the light speed equation is the same as any wave equation, right? Except for velocity, 
we put a C. C is the speed of light. It's a constant. And uh, that's not why it was given C. C actually came from the word celeritas, which means swift in Latin. But so this is still a velocity. This C is still a velocity. So you have the speed of light is constant all the time. Any electromagnetic radiation, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's 300 million meters per second. Uh, that's really fast, right? That is extremely fast. <clears throat> and it all travels at that speed. doesn't matter what type it is, radio to gamma. It's all going to travel the same. So let's look at an example problem. All right, we're going to go back up here. Sorry about that. We're going to look at a sample problem really quick. And uh, what we're going to look at is just how you actually calculate, make calculations with this equation. Um, now, it's all the same as the others, as the other wave speed equations. But you have now, instead of having to know the velocity, it's always the same. It's always 3 times 10 to the 8. So finding the wavelength or sorry, finding the frequency, knowing the wavelength. This again, you've got to put everything in meters, so the 10 centimeters becomes 0.1 meters. You rearrange the equation, three, to, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 0.1 is 3 times 10 to the 9th hertz. That is a really high frequency. Uh, and then the wavelength, looking for the wavelength, rearrange the same equation, except now solve it for the wavelength. Gives you a frequency. Um, you do the math, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 6 times 10 to the 14th, and you get a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, which is 500 nanometers, which if you were thinking about the different colors, that would be blue. All right, so we're going to look at well, what is color. Okay, remember, color depends on which electromagnetic, what electromagnetic radiation is falling upon an object. So look at these cubes. This is under white light. We always think of color um, in terms of what it reflects back to us right out of the white light spectrum well white carries red orange yellow green blue indigo violet it carries all those colors so if something looks red that means that object is only reflecting red back to you so this is what all these colors look like under white light and i want you to take some time to look at you can pause the video take some time to look at what it looks like under these different lights blue yellow red think about why that might be happening all right so if you take a an object sorry about that let's go back Take an object, say that's green, and you, you know, you look at well, why is it green? You know, why is one thing green? Why is one thing red? Why is anything blue? Why is something yellow? So it all depends on what is reflected back to you, um, based on the white light coming in. So if you have white light shining on something, and that's pretty much in every scenario that you can think of, where you're not actively trying to not use white light. So being outside, being in your house, you're gonna have white light shining on it. So you have white light shining on something that's green. It reflects only green back to you and absorbs the rest. That's why it appears green. If, for some instance, you've shown something that's blue, only blue, you didn't have all these other colors, on a green surface, you wouldn't get any light reflected back to you, so the object would appear black. Okay, watch these videos as they come. They're really good. So why do we see things? Well, rods and cones in our eyes allow us to see things and it depends on how your rods and cones work the cones actually make uh, have you perceive color um, depending on how those work depending on what your is gonna gonna be how you perceive color which of course is always related to a standard so most people most people say that something's red that means it's red um, if you have a color blindness deficiency it means that you may have some you know deficiency where you can't see certain colors well and it makes things appear different colors to other people than it does to you all right so um we see all these colors um other than red green and blue since that's the main lights that our cones can pick up because uh, light mixes and you can see how it mixes there um you have these primary colors, red, green, and blue, add up. Red and green make yellow. Red and blue make magenta. Blue and green make cyan. So these are some other shades, colors. And then different shades, different intensities of light of that will give you these other colors that you see. And then all of them combined make white. All right, so say you have white light shining on this shirt, okay? Well, the light that you will see, you will see red get reflected. The rest of them will get absorbed, and then the blue will reflect blue. All right, so on your quiz, the bonus, 
Miss Polk's favorite dessert is creme brulee. Have a good one. Hope y'all are doing okay. Till next week.